If YouTube playlists are not your thing, you can find this course and more at poll.unfgames.com. It's easier to follow along and know where you left off. Now, let's start the video. The next element is the My Blueprint tab. And here we will find every little detail this blueprint has. If we click this drop down on the event graph, we will find, and let's double, double click the event graph, we will find every event that is being contained here in this graph. We can add more graphs and we'll talk about that later. There are also functions. Our construction script is being considered a function and we could add more right here. Also, because there is a parent, here is the parent class, the actor, we can override functions and here it will show from where is the source of this, of this function. So we can override them. Just press click. In this case, it has created an event that will override. And this event, maybe I can do a right click, add call to parent function. And now I'm calling the functionality that exists inside the parent class that is the actor. But let's not bother with that now. We can create macros. We will learn how to use macros eventually. Don't worry. But we can create it here. Variables. And variables are the way that information is being stored inside a blueprint. It's like a little box that contains information. Let's create a variable. For example, I want to know how many coins this blueprint, well, this coin pickup should give me. Let's create a variable called number of coins to give. So a little, a little tip about naming variables, they should reflect on what they are storing. And it should be really clear whenever I read a variable for the purpose that I'm using it. For example, if this variable was called just x, is x what? x numbers, x coins, x delay before another coin appears. You really don't know. And many people could name this whatever and then add a tooltip, but it's a lot better if the name, even if it's longer, gives you gives you a good idea or well if it's literal in our case it's really re really literal so it's number of coins to give then it's easier to understand now we said that it was a box where we can store information and in this case i want to have a number so we need to define a type for this variable in this case these are the most common and most used types here we have booleans, if we want a true or false, it will store it. We have integers that we're going to use in this case, because I don't really need to give like one and a half coin. If I needed to use decimals, we can use floats or doubles. Strings will be used for characters, or a, a string of characters, so we can write stuff in in the engine and do operation on them, maybe separate them by the middle or append text to it. And then we have vectors. They are really useful to save locations. The rotator is like a vector, but useful for rotations. And the transform is just a, ve a vector, a rotator and an other vector that it's similar like we have here in, for example, the sphere. This is a transform, location, rotation, and scale. So now I have created my variable. And here in the functions, I also want, want to create the function called picked up. And you, you will see that here it is just open a tab with the function I just created. 
So here in this function, I could add more code. So yeah, let's go to the next. Oh, um, before going to the next element, here are the event dispatchers. We will talk about them later. And here are look in the case of the of, of functions, we can create local variables that only exist when this function is being run, is being executed. So that's good to know also. 